dear parents brothers and sisters and little children hope and pray that all of you are keeping fine the acts of the apostles uh, give us a pattern of christian living especially how can we live the easter spirituality in prayer in understanding our mission and in witnessing the risen lord easter spirituality is simply defined as the renewal of life or a new life first let us practice easter spirituality in prayer we all are interested in prayer and i am sure that we spend some quality time for the prayer every day in our own little way i like to say what the servant of god father al schwartz a founder of the congregation of sisters of mary and the founder of the boys and girls town in philippines uh, spoke about the prayer he said a prayer is the rising up prayer is the raising up of one's mind and heart to god it is a loving conversation with god it is fundamental to spiritual life it is the oxygen of the soul if the body lacks oxygen it becomes weak dizzy and eventually it dies and so it is if the soul does not pray it becomes weak dizzy exhausted and eventually it dies praying psalms creates a, a great bond between god and the faithful thus the holy church uses many psalms and canticles during the morning midday and evening prayers called vespers considering and reflecting upon today's responsorial psalm psalm 4 we sang let god's face shine on us psalm 4 which is the dialogue between the psalmist and god it begins with a prayer for god's grace and a plea that god will answer his prayer that is our belief too the dialogue continues with affirmations of faith and confidence and ends with the joy of knowing the security in the lord's provident care some is praise when i call answer me o oh my just god you who relieve me when i am in distress have pity on me and hear my prayer may i repeat when i call answer me the psalmist prays oh my just god you who relieve me when i am in distress have pity on me and hear my prayer my dear friends let it be our belief and prayer today as we go on with our activities and the life today now let me move on to the second topic how can we understand the presence of the risen lord and our mission or simply to say let us practice easter spirituality the renewal of our life in understanding our own mission i personally loved this story about the disciples who were on the road to emmaus and wondered about the disappearance of jesus not only this time i even asked father john that why jesus kept disappearing from the place where he appeared for some time where was he hiding do you have any knowledge about that 
We were simply discussing on that. Father laughed and said that Jesus went ahead of the apostles uh, to the places where he could meet them. And of course, we entered into other discussions. And another interesting thing that I used to wonder, why they could not recognize the voice of Jesus on the way to Emmaus. For Jesus told that, I am a good shepherd, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. John chapter 10, verse 14. So they're supposed to know, to recognize the voice of Jesus as Jesus joined with, with them on the way. They could not recognize the voice of Jesus because they did not believe in the resurrection of the Lord that we can see even in today's gospel. Because they did not believe in the resurrection of the Lord, their ears and minds and hearts were closed spiritually. But they could recognize Jesus when he broke the bread. They saw it. They saw it and so believed. On that right moment, they recognized the risen Lord. I think very often, those two disciples really represent all of us. Every day. Another question is that, then what happened after that? As usual, Jesus instantly disappeared. The disciples were so excited, they immediately got their sandals on and in the dark walked the seven miles back to Jerusalem. So another simple thing, Jesus did not eat, only broke the bread. They recognized it. So Jesus did not eat, the disciples did not eat either. So nobody had a dinner. They left everything. They never bothered about their tiredness. They never bothered about their hungry stomach. They never bothered about the darkness, the dangers on the way back. And really they went back to Jerusalem to inform the rest of the apostles that they saw Jesus and he is risen. And that was their mission. That is ours too. May I take the following ex explanation from one of my biblical professors for the question, how could the disciples go back to Jerusalem in darkness? How could they go back? My professor told that sometimes, uh, it is a little theological, my professor told that sometimes God acts in a, such an insignificant way that all ordinary things, eating or resting, fear, anxiety or safety, have to be abandoned because the new thing God is doing is more important and there can be no delay. Other things can wait. God's will is for right now. Therefore, they courageously went back to report what they experienced. Or simply we can say, they gave priority, the first priority uh, to the proclamation of their experience. Therefore, my dear friends, we come to the gospel. We heard from today's gospel, Luke chapter 24, 35 to 48, then they told that what had happened on the road, that is how we are beginning. The gospel is begun today. And how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. As they were saying this, you see, again Jesus appeared. Jesus himself stood among them. And you can see as the story goes on. And verse 48 you are the witnesses of these things. Today, Jesus is basically saying to each one of us,
you have heard me. You have experienced me. You have experienced the healing. You have experienced the mercy and love of mine. Do not keep it to yourself. Go and proclaim. But we need little courage for this. Today's gospel, how the passage ends also, Jesus said to the disciples as he is saying to us today. Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and the repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations. That is our mission, my dear friends. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are the witness of, witnesses of these things. Luke chapter 24, 46 to 48. Peter says also the same thing in our first reading. To this, we are witnesses that will lead and I'm sure this point will lead us to the third point. Not only the Easter spirituality we practiced in prayer, not only Easter spirituality, the renewal of life practiced in understanding our mission, but how we can become the true and faithful witnesses for Christ. As witnesses, what are we to say to the world? What precisely are we witnessing to? Very simple, but very difficult. Repentance and forgiveness of sin. We need a lot of forgiveness for one another at home and in the community. Our primary message to the world is the same message Peter proclaimed to the great assembly of people who had gathered in the instance of the healing of the lame person, lame man, who begged for alms. The message is very simple. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out. My dear friends, I like to conclude in order to, uh, I repeat two things again. In order to practice our Easter spirituality, the renewal of life in prayer, in understanding of our mission, and witnessing our Lord, we need the virtue of humility. For Jesus says that he is meek and humble, and we have to learn from him. But also we can learn from the apostles the same humility. You see, Peter had healed a lame man, and people began to follow him. Peter told them that it was not his holiness that healed the man. It was the power of faith in the name of Jesus whom they rejected and crucified and who rose from the dead. Peter called them to change their ways and turn from ignorance to faith in the power of Jesus who died for them and who rose again as he had promised. Peter did not draw people to himself. He called them to turn to the risen Jesus. This is the call for each one of us. Like Peter, the call of all ministers, all of us to point the people to Jesus and his word. Be humble and learn to trust in the power of the risen Lord. Amen.